Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This video lecture is about image analysis. As we are moving further into the subject of advanced machine vision, things are getting more and more closer to what our brain is doing in everyday life. What is image analysis? By the name it suggests that we are going to analyze image for something. But for what? Analysis means to process something and try to extract some information out of it. So, for example, if we are processing images and trying to extract some information out of it, then it is called image analysis. For example, if you are viewing this window and you are trying to figure out what is written at which corner or which location of this image, when you are analyzing this image, you are recognizing things present on it and you are trying to make sense out of it. So you are extracting information from this image. But it happens sometimes that your brain is doing something else, but you are staring at this video lecture, but you are not listening to it and you are not extracting information from the image. It happens quite often when you are distracted and when you are doing something else. So in that case, your brain will still be processing this image, but it will not be analyzing it because it is not extracting any useful information from it. For example, it must have happened to all of us that sometimes our brain is thinking about something else and we are staring at, for example, TV screen or we are staring at someone. When that someone approaches us and asks us, why you are staring me, you say, Oh, I'm not because your brain is not processing that scene or whoever is the person in that scene. Therefore, image analysis means to analyze an image, process an image and try to extract useful data that is information or some knowledge from the image. But if you are not extracting any information, any useful knowledge from the image, then that won't be categorized as image analysis. As our brain is continuously analyzing the vision data which it is receiving, it is doing this thing automatically. You cannot shut down your brain. In fact, you can just close your eyes so that visionary data don't get into your brain. But if your eyes are open, then you cannot shut down your brain so that it won't process any image data. So this thing is happening automatically. So we want our machine vision systems to perform in this way. We want the image data to be analyzed automatically so that whatever the useful information is present in that image, it is automatically extracted and changed into the form in which we want or in the form in which it can be processed further. Now, depending on the application, there are broad spectrum of techniques that can be used over here. We are going to use some basic techniques. We are going to merge them with some high level techniques. And in fact, the complexity of the technique depend on the complexity of the information which we want to extract from it. Basically, we can divide image analysis techniques into three main categories. The first one is template matching then statistical pattern recognition, which on its own is quite vast and we will spend quite a lot of time in this area when we will get to it. And the last one are the Huff transforms. In this lecture, I'm going to go with template matching and Huff transform. And I leave statistical pattern recognition for a completely separate lecture. This categorization was based on the type of techniques that can be used to analyze an image. But what if we classify image analysis based on the application? If we do that, there are three main categories of applications that can utilize image analysis. The first one is inspection. In these type of application, we are mostly concerned with the form, color or shape of the object. Suppose that you are given this part of the image only and you have already in your database different alphabets. You want to know that whether this object contained in this image is similar to something present in your data set or not. So you are inspecting it. 
how you will inspect it or how an inspector inspects something when he is, for example, working for quality assurance in some industry. He picks up a sample from the produced product. He compares that produced product with something stored in the database. And if that product matches the information stored in the database, then you will say that this product is OK. So over here, if this object matches something which is present in the database and it matches by this much percentage, so this is the most simple technique or the most simple application where you just compare two things. One thing you already know that is present in your database and one thing is unknown. The second application is location. Now you don't only want to know that what thing is present in the image, what unknown thing is present in the image, but you also want to know its location. For example, now if this complete image is given, then you want to know that where this capital A is lying in this complete image. So you will somehow find that it is lying over here. So now you know that it is a capital A and you also know that where it is lying. And the last application domain is identification. Now you don't want to just know that what kind of object is present over here, but you also know that what is that object. For example, in the previous two application in inspection and location, your system shouldn't know or doesn't need to know whether this is an A or not. It just needed to know that whatever is this thing, that thing is present in my database. But now in identification, it has to classify this A as well. It has to classify it as a capital letter. So generally speaking, I hope that I have cleared three different domains of application where image analysis can be used. Generally speaking, inspection will only utilize template matching because you are only comparing an unknown object with something that is already present in your database. Whereas location problem, it will utilize template matching for finding some unknown object and half transforms to find the location of that object. Whereas the last one, which is identification, it is going to use everything at its disposal. It is going to use template matching if needed. It is going to use half transforms if needed. And it is going to rely on statistical pattern recognition as well.